13th Amendment, it says, I have persons born in the United States are subject to the jurisdiction. They start and evolved in America up until citizens of Virginia or citizens of Massachusetts. They were not citizens of the United States because the United States is nothing more than a confederation of independent nations. And so today, when a person is in, has a social security card or if a person in, uh, registers to vote or whatever, they basically are affirming that they are subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, which means they essentially waive their unable God-given rights, that these rights no longer apply to them. The government is now the provider of privileges, and the God-given rights have been put on the shelf. Now, we've, uh, in, in the last uh, year, we witnessed the murder of people that uh, they were being called derogatorily sovereigns. They uh, did this, and they accused them of killing some cops, which, uh, of course, that was never proven since they were murdered. But uh, it was to demonize the whole concept of sovereignty. I mean, I think I'm sovereign. I don't, uh, I don't agree to any of these uh, bogus contracts. And... Uh, you know, I mean, there's a certain amount of, uh, I paid into Social Security, so I intend to get that back. And, uh, but, uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, we are debt slaves, and I think I have an answer. I came up with a, a concept, I asked myself years ago. Uh, you know, what did they, how did we get by before the internet? How did we get by a hundred years ago? And my friend Richard Kelly Hoskins suggests uh, that the foundation of every civilization is the self-sufficient family farm. What I've told people when a communist regime takes over a country, they go after the uh, they go after the uh, farmers first. They go after the intelligentsia next. That's anyone smart enough to know what they're doing, what they're trying to pull. And third, they go after the veterans and law enforcement that might still be loyal to the old regime. That's happening right now. They're trying to demonize oath keepers. They tried to demonize the militia. What part of the Second Amendment didn't you understand? I mean, we, uh, now, now, I don't know if you ever, uh, uh, told me whether we're, are we facing communism, or are we facing fascism, because, uh, you know, control, corporations controlling the government or working hand in hand with the government certainly the definition of uh, fascism, and that's what we uh, seem to have here. Well, the one problem that, that, that I see is, is that fascism implies that there are two separate independent ind agencies that essentially go into partnership, and that is that the government is one body and that the corporations are another body and that they are parallel. Well, I don't really think that that's exactly what we've got. I think that we have uh, what I would consider to be an oligarchy. And the, uh, the oligarchy is an oligarchy of the bankers. And I think the oligarchy of the bankers, essentially, are the uh, ones who are calling the shots for the government. So I don't believe that the government and the bankers are parallel. I believe that the bankers are above the government, and the government, essentially, is, uh, is calling, is, is, is their shots are being called by the bankers. I think that the way the original plan was is that God is the, is the ultimate sovereign, and that we are directly below God. We created the government, and the government created the corporations. So in that hierarchy, the, the uh, corporations are at the very bottom. But things have been flipped. God essentially has been assassinated. He doesn't exist anymore. And at the top of the equation, the corporation is actually on top of the pyramid. Below the corporation is the government, which is serving as, again, the collection agency and the enforcement arm for the corporation. And we, the people, at the, at the bottom. And, of course, God has been taken completely out of the equation. 
Yeah, been taken out of our schools too. Maybe that might explain Columbine and Sandy Hook, if Sandy Hook ever happened. The, uh, but and, and a God is really a much more than just Christianity. I mean, uh, you know, I, I I have my doubts if you've got uh, one God uh, out there, and all the religions seem to agree on that. I don't think he cares one way or other what you call him, as long as you talk to him. But uh, the the money changers that Jesus ran out of the temple. I mean that uh, that story stands out in the Bible. The uh, money changers he ran out of the uh, temple turned around and murdered him later. And we've been fighting that same battle. I said the only thing they did, uh, you know, money changers are still with us. They just changed the name of the temple. Man. They call it the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, Federal Reserve, or the Bank of England. Well, you know, it's interesting that in, in the days of Jesus that uh, the, the most despised of all were the, the lawyers, the money changers, and the tax collectors. And our government is the personification of all three. Now, I got accused of uh, being uh, anti-government when I started the militias, but, uh, uh, you know, hardly, uh, you know, what part of the Second Amendment don't you understand out there, folks? But uh, in reality, what I was doing was a, presenting a threat to the whole banking system. The IRS is a collection agency for the banks. I mean, for many years, if you sent a check to IRS, it came back stamped, paid to the order of the Federal Reserve. Well, you know, you know also on the on checks it says the Department of Treasury, but it doesn't say the Department of the United States Treasury. The, the treasury they're referring to, I believe it's, I think it's called R.E. Harrington. It's a, frankly, it's an international insurance company. It, it, it's their treasury. And one of the things that I've learned uh, the, out of the Grace Commission reports during the presidency of Ronald Reagan is the fact that all of the money collected by the IRS never goes into the United States government. It all is retained by the, by the IRS corporation. And uh, with the uh, information that I got from Walter Burian, he indicated that last year, uh, while the government tells us that we have a deficit of about $1.3 trillion, the reality is that the federal government collected $2.5 trillion in taxes last year, but they also received $5 trillion in investment returns. So the total revenue for the United States government was $7.5 trillion. They spent $3.8 trillion, which means rather than having a $1.3 trillion deficit, the government actually had a surplus of $3.7 trillion. Well, if we have a surplus of $3.7 trillion, we don't need to raise taxes. As a matter of fact, we don't even need taxes. You could take the $2.5 trillion that we collected in taxes, and we could return all of that to the taxpayers and give everybody a 100% refund of everything that they pay to the IRS, and our government would still have a surplus of over $1.3 trillion. And so taxes are not about money. They are about control and human bondage. And uh, we need to come up with a system of honest accounting because right now most of the money that flows into the um, federal government is kept off off the off the books. It's not. It's like there's two sets of books, you know. And if you had allowed uh, if you had allowed Al Capone to have his set of books, he never would have been sent to jail in the first place. You yeah, know. What just happened uh, in that, uh, when that revolving door in the White House swung and let uh, Obama in, as George Bush was walking out, he gave the owners of the Federal Reserve $2 trillion or more. And he just gave it to them, uh, you know, too big to fail. Well, we're going to bail out the banks. Now, now, that $2 trillion, what's the interest on $2 trillion? Will your grandchildren ever be able to pay the interest on that $2 trillion? And why why didn't we do it like Iceland did? Uh, they, uh, they put the bankers in jail and bailed out the uh, people. 
What about the biblical jubilee? Well, you know, what about uh, the principle of um, biblical concurrency and in, 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 in jubilee? The, the whole idea that there should be debt forgiveness to allow people to be able to have their freedom restored to them, at least temporarily. Now, I have a plan here, and I'm going to use uh, this next ten minutes to tell people about it. Because, folks, if you want to participate in an answer, all you got to do is send uh, me an email, clay at freeamerican.com. Give me all the contact information and tell me what you have to offer. We can't do this alone, and I'm just one guy. Keith's just one guy, but we're trying to get the information out to me. And, and by the way, put uh, your website, constitutionclub.com, right? Well, the best way to find me is to go to http colon two forward slashes and then constitution club and then it's ning, N-I-N-G dot com, ning dot com. If you go there and join up, I'd really appreciate it. We have about 20, 2,400 members now. We've been uh, in business now for about six months. There's been a tremendous amount of people that have uh, responded and uh, the, the concept here is, is that we cannot save the nation in ignorance. We need to educate ourselves we need to take responsibility we, we uh, basically uh, believe that the only way that the government and people can remain free is to be eternally vigilant and that involves responsibility which means is that we can't sit back and be spectators we need to roll up our sleeves and and learn and to share and to, and to, and to get involved now a number of years ago I came up with an answer I had five acres out in the middle of nowhere and I, I figured if I could get some people to come there and stay there and help me, put up some low-cost structures, whether it was cabins or tents or teepees or trailers, and grow our own food and generate our own electricity from everything God gave us, we didn't need the banks or the government for anything. And... Uh, the, uh, they tried to kill me over that. Somebody tried to stop me, prevent me. Even uh, Southern Poverty Law, which uh, has certainly had a hand in Edgar Steele's plight, they even put out a little uh, uh, story uh, trying to uh, diminish anything that I was trying to do. And. I found that one of the problems is uh, nobody could move to the country because all the jobs are in the city. But I asked myself, why can't we bring the country to the city? And I've got example after example after example of just one family in the middle of L.A. that's grown 6,000 pounds of food in their backyard. And I envisioned a, a situation where the children are educated within that one square block of uh, any city. Let's say any city. One square block, you go there, you can get courses on a government, on our republic, through Timothy Bible College or the Little Red Schoolhouse. You can get your diplomas, you can get your degrees, you can learn how to use the internet. And in you, if you converted your roof to solar panels and your backyard to a garden, a few houses could feed the whole neighborhood. We wouldn't need trucks to deliver it. And this is actually working in a farm to city in Oklahoma in a uh, co-op. Now, I like the idea of a co-op because there ain't no king, and there ain't no president, and there ain't nobody standing up in, uh, in front. Or actually, I think they do have an uh, Oklahoma co food co-op does have a president. But you join for $50 a year, and you can bring your food in to, from the farm or your backyard into a distribution point. The people can show up and buy their food from the distribution point. They, you can get your, by, because you're working together, you can get your uh, staples, uh, your coffee, uh, your tea, uh, your sugar at wholesale plus 10. And it's, it's, it's 
recreating the whole idea of a self-sufficient family farm right in the middle of the city. You could do it in Detroit, for God's sake. Take some of these old uh, uh, factories they've got there and convert them uh, with solar. Heat them and grow your food indoors up there. Now, now, to me, that's the only, I, I, I mean, after, and, I, and I've been through the Republican Party. I, run to, I, I went across country with a man that was running for president in 96, wanted to eliminate the Federal Reserve, and, of course, that's who, why. Who, who, who are you talking about? His name was Charles Collins. He was the first Republican mm -hmm. to sign up for the uh, presidential race in 1996. And you never heard about him because when he got up uh, before the cameras to tell everybody we could buy back the Federal Reserve, that the Federal Reserve was our problem, every cameraman on stage turned the cameras off, pointed them at the ground, and in two states, in Maine and uh, Michigan, they unplugged his microphone so nobody knew. Nobody knew. Every we'd go in there the night before and put up Collins uh, for president beside Bob Dole, beside Pat Buchanan, beside Alan Keyes, beside Phil Graham, and by morning when we got into the room, every sign with Charles Collins' name on it was gone. Well, it's just a coincidence. Yeah, strange coincidence. Well, the American people have got to take responsibility. You see, I think that one of the problems that we have is, that I mentioned it earlier, that everybody wants to be free, but nobody wants to be responsible. Everybody wants someone else to take care of them. Everyone else wants someone else to bear the ultimate responsibility. But when you, when you allow another person to take responsibility, there's a price you must pay, and that is the loss of your personal liberty. Well, that's true, and... Uh Keith, I'd like to invite you back on Wednesday, July 10th. I'd like you to come back on my show, and about that time you'll have a chance to uh, study uh, a little bit on Timothy Bible College, the Little Red Schoolhouse, and uh, the Liberty Village concept. You know, maybe I'm just fooling myself. Maybe people are too damn lazy to get off their ass and uh, dig in a garden to uh, dig up the crabgrass in their backyard and uh, grow their own food. Maybe they don't want to work canning. Uh, maybe they don't want to, they, they, because they don't want responsibility. I, I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to call attention to myself. This is what, this is what should be being taught in the schools. Primarily, the number one thing that should be taught in the school is the whole nature of what is liberty, what is the responsibilities of liberty? This is, should be one of the main areas of the curriculum. Plus, I think, frankly, that the children should also be learning, uh, essentially, how to uh, how to plant and harvest crops, how to irrigate, how to um, fix your car, uh, how to work with wood, how to do things that will make you independent and, and able to be able to function without being dependent upon somebody else. I this agree with that. And we're out of time here. I'll have you back on Wednesday. Thank you for Thank being you very with much, me. Sir. I Thank appreciate you. it. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye.